Good afternoon, full day of hockey. There's a news video I need to do as well, so I will get that done uh, this afternoon. But we're going to start off with reviewing the first two games of the day. And this one, the result might have been predictable, but there's some stuff to discuss here. And this one, just great game overall. Uh, so we have a lot to discuss, starting with Columbus and the Boston Bruins. It was Tarasov versus Swayman. Uh, I remember the comments about how bad Swayman was after the game in Arizona. I, you know, I find it so weird how with goaltenders, fans have such a short attention span and memory that a goalie has a bad game and all of a sudden it's like, he needs to go. He needs to be, holy man. Anyways, Bergeron, 1,000 points. They had the nice ceremony for that before the game. So Bergeron, one of the classiest players in the league. Nice to see. Uh, DeBrusque has a rush chance that deflects wide. The shots are 2-0 for the Bruins at four and a half minutes. Uh, Bruins press, but they're kept to the outside. Foligno couldn't bury one from the side of the net. The Bruins get a power play, and they score on it. It's Pasternak from Lindholm and Marchand at 7-17. It's a one-timer. It's his 20th of the season, and it was a good cycle that led to the goal. No chance for Tarasov. Jackets then get a power play. That's killed off. One shot allowed during that. Line A then fires one wide. The Bruins clear it out. There was another power play for Columbus. Uh, if there's a concern I would have for Boston in this game, it's the amount of power plays they gave Columbus. So uh, Hall was denied as the Bruins press after the, the Bruins killed off that power play as well. 347 left. The Bruins get a power play. There was a shorthanded rush for Olivier that killed some time, and they killed it all, and they allowed no shots to the Bruins on that one. Uh, Columbus presses during a delayed penalty. Good chances. The penalty is then called with 17.6 seconds left. Bjork has a blast that's held before the horn. And we go to the second period. The Bruins do finish the kill in the second period. Johnson has a net drive that's held by Swayman. The shots are 3-0 for the Jackets at 4 minutes. Uh, Lindholm fires one wide as the Bruins press. Krejci fires one wide on a rush. We had 2 minutes of 4-on-4. Four four. Uh, the shots are 8-4 to four for the Bruins with 7.5 minutes left. The Bru the Blue Jackets then get a power play, and it's four on three for a minute and 23 seconds. Line A fires one wide, Carlo clears, but then on a good cycle with the Bruins kind of a little bit out of sorts. Somebody was without a stick on that play as well, so it's four on two and a half. And uh, Goudreau recognizes that immediately and finds Jenner at the side of the net. He roofs it, so it's Jenner from Goudreau and Line A at 14 minutes. Really good power play for Columbus, ties the game at one. Bruins press for an answer with 3.33 left. The Bruins get a power play. They score on it. It's Krejci from McAvoy and Hall at 17.50. Fantastic pass by McAvoy. One-timer by Krejci. Uh, Peak then defends a Marchand rush as it looked like Boston was going for more. They did press in the final minute, those Bruins, but they do not get another goal. So we go to the third period with the score 2-1. to one. Uh, early press by the Bruins. Puck bounces off Tarasov's mask and onto the top of the net, and it was on purpose. He knew the puck was up, so he bounced it off his mask, and it landed on top of the net rather than in it. Shots are 5-2 to two for the Bruins at four and a half minutes. The Bruins would press at the half. Robinson has a shot that's blocked as now Columbus is getting some pressure. Uh, DeBrusque has a rush chance that's held, but... Uh, during a delayed penalty, this happened against L.A. and it happened again today. And I swear it was Hall in the game against L.A. as well. Hall gets the goal from Pasternak and Krejci at 12.41. During a delayed penalty, Boston gets that goaltender out right away and it becomes a power play on the spot. And it's lethal for them over the last couple of games. Then 19 seconds later, it's Nosek on a rush. He scores from Forbert and Smith at 13 minutes. Columbus would get a power play. They score on it. Line A scores from Bjork and Goudreau at 14.29. Pasternak nearly answers. He gets denied by Tarasov, who honestly had a good game. Uh, goalie pull with 155 left and Swayman. Oh my gosh, I really wanted that. Even though I already had the Ottawa gear on, I was like, the Swayman jersey goes on if this happens. He almost hit that empty net. It just curled wide. Really wanted that empty net goal, and I'm sure he did too, and so did everybody in attendance. But it's icing. So... In the end, Boston wins this one 4-2. They go to 24-4-2. The Jackets had a good game, and this is their problem. They're now 10-18-2. They had a good game. They get no points. Uh, it, it doesn't help them at all. And, uh, yeah, you look at the shots. Legitimately, Columbus was in this. They're 11 apiece in the first and the second. In the third, Boston outshoots them 17-10. Final shots, 39-32 for Boston. Power plays, Columbus 2-5. Uh, Boston 2 for 3. The hits 26 to 19. Columbus Tarasov saves 35 out of 39. Swayman saves 30 out of 32. So Swayman had a great game. I really wish he'd hit that empty net. That would have been just amazing. But at any rate, 
uh, yeah, that bounce back game. There it is right there. So everybody who wanted him gone, now those same Bruins fans can be like, oh, no, no, I, I always knew he'd bounce back. I was just kidding the other day. All right, Columbus uh, was one story, but Ottawa was another. Ottawa going into Detroit. Detroit is in trouble. Uh, Detroit, and I know for Detroit fans are rolling their eyes and saying, yeah, we know. Uh, and as I said in that video I did, it's about a couple weeks since I did that video now, that the upcoming schedule would say a lot. And what it says right now is Detroit is not ready for the playoffs. Don't get too discouraged, Wings fans. There's the, the right players here for this team to turn it around. So it's Talbot versus Huso. Early chances for the Wings. Good back and forth play. Few whistles. And then the first shot Detroit gets goes in the net. It's Valeno from Kubalik and Soderblom at 232. I believe it's Valeno's 100th game today as well. Uh, and it was a brief press, and it's in the net. Shots are 2-1 to one for the Senators at 4.5 minutes, but that one shot from Detroit has gone in the net. Post for Kelly on a rush. The Sens press at 6 minutes. Gambrell is a one-timer. That's kicked aside. Wings press at 9 minutes. That draws them a power play. That was killed off. Uh, Talbot with some snow angels after to hold a puck. And then Dabrinkit ties it from Batherson and Pinto at 12.47. TSN jinxed Huso. Uh, they had just put up a graphic saying Huso leads the NHL in shutouts. Seconds later, there's a goal. Proof. Jinx. Uh, Sens press with six minutes left. Talbot holds a shot with Sunquist right on the doorstep. And then Ernie scores. It went in off Ernie's leg. No chance for Talbot on that one. Wallman and Suter with the assists at 14.56. Uh, there's a press by the Senators with three minutes left. That pressure ends up drawing a power play with 2.07 left. And they score on it. It's Shabbat to make it 2-2 from Dabrinkit and Kachuk at 18.42. Uh, shortly after that, Talbot didn't have a puck, but it looked like he did. So the whistle bails him out there. Uh, and then Talbot uh, was almost bested by a buzzer beater, but it just it just won't go. So uh, for Detroit, they had their opportunities to go up 3-2. We go to the second period, tied it to. Early power play for the Senators in that second period, and they score on it. One minute and 40 seconds, it's Batherson. From Kachuk and Dabrinkit, he buries the rebound. Uh, so that makes it 3-2. to two, And this is where I start feeling bad for Huso. He's allowed three goals in 21 minutes and 40 seconds on, what, 12 shots at that point? But the reality is, these are just absolute goals that y you need better defense on. So while Huso's numbers are not good today, it's definitely not on Huso. This, this to me, was the defense in front of him really let him down. So Steve Eiserman watching this game has to think, so it's defense I need to figure out, and he'd be right if he thinks that. So uh, Pinto has a home run pass to Gambrell that gets picked off. If that had been 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 caught by Gambrell, he would have been in alone, probably would have scored there. Uh, wings get a power play. There's a shorthanded breakaway for Pinto. That was saved. So the power play for the Wings is a problem as well. Uh, Rasmussen has a rush chance. That's held. The Wings press at eight minutes. There's a power play for the Wings. Too many sends on the ice makes it a five on three. So if the guy has jumped on the ice that you are being replaced for, do not play the puck. That makes it too many men on the ice. Uh, so 48 seconds of five on three. Detroit calls a timeout. Whatever they discussed works. It's a five on three goal by Hronik from Perron and Raymond at 12-14. It's nice to see Hronik not missing any time after that hit from Reeves. Uh, Sens then kill the five on four. They also get a power play shortly thereafter. Debrink gets robbed, fires the next one wide. That's killed off by Detroit. 32.2 um, seconds left. The Wings go back to the power play. So that rolls over into the third period. Uh, the Sens finish the kill. Uh, wings press at three minutes. The Sens press right back the next shift. Near miss then for Giroux. Mott can't bury one in close. The Sens get a power play. And they score on it. This one's a power play goal as well, right? Yes, the Giroux one was. From Kachuk at 8.14, he wires that one through a screen. It was a nice play by Kachuk in front of the net to help set that up too. Uh, sends press for another, but the Wings get a power play. And this is a problem. During your power play, you've already allowed a shorthanded breakaway for Pinto. Well, now Mott gets one. He scores a shorthanded goal from Kelly at 12.48. And it was on a rush after a big save by Talbot. Uh, so the Sens finish the kill at 3.17. The Wings go back to the power play. They pull the goaltender to make it 6 on 4. That allows another shorthanded goal. It's an empty netter. Watson puts it into the net at 16.49. So that makes it 6-3. to three. The Sens finish the kill, and that crowd didn't sound happy at the end of this. Your final score is 6-3 to three in favor of the Ottawa Senators. They get back to 500, 14-14-2. So they have salvaged what was a really rough start to the season. Good for them. Uh, for Detroit, they're 13-11-6 with the loss. It's just not, not going well. 
Uh, the shots, 12-9 Detroit in the first, 11-6 Ottawa in the second, 14-8 Detroit in the third. Final shots, 32-28 in favor of the Wings. Power plays, Ottawa 3-for-5, Detroit 1-for-7. And, of course, allowing the shorthanded goal doesn't help, so just the special teams weren't in Detroit's favor. Hits 18-14 to 14 Ottawa. Talbot saves 29 out of 32. Not bad after allowing a goal in the first shot. And then Huso saves 22 out of 27 at the other end. But again, I can't put that on Huso. The defense in front of him, not fantastic. And they're relying way too many really good chances for the Senators. But if you're a Sens fan, you have to feel pretty good right now, right? Because they're back in the hunt. And for Detroit fans, probably not feeling quite as good about things, right? But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.